All right, guys, and now I want to talk about finding weak squares in the opponent's camp and trying to use them to your advantage. So we have a position from a Sicilian where Black broke his pawn structure and has some problems around the king side, especially the f6 square, uh, the g6 square, and the h6 square. So right away, White should start thinking, hmm, how can I exploit those squares, right? It's not always about attacking pawns or attacking kings. Sometimes we need to fight for squares. So here, we've already gotten control of them. It's just a matter of how we can use them, right? Uh, this pawn is not uh, going away for now, so we can dream of getting a knight there. And then we start thinking, hmm, how can we put a piece on that outpost? So then we follow the principle of take your worst piece and make it better right so one way of doing it would be something like uh, knight somehow getting to h2 then g4 and f6 so maybe we push this pawn up but the second we put the knight to h2 then we trade off the queens and that's not what we want to do if you're trying for a kingside attack with a knight on f6 so then we start to think what's our worst piece and the answer to that is the knight on a3 so then we take this knight and we start to find a way to get him to this square. And what I came up with in this game is knight to c2, knight to e3, then pawn to h3, then knight to g4, and knight to f6. Black cannot allow this knight to get here or to h6 in some cases, so black will have to at some point play f6. But when black plays f6, then he will create new weaknesses in his camp. Hopefully you guys will see that after f6, takes, 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 there are new squares which we can use, especially the e5 square in the center of the board. So then the knight will head over to that e5 square. Okay, let's see how this turned out in real life. First, the knight comes to c2. Black takes out his bishop, just normal developments of play. Uh, we are heading for the targets, and Black has to play f6. Uh, if he doesn't play it right now, he may not get another chance, so he's really trying to hurry uh, to get rid of that uh, annoying pawn. White just takes, because after all those trades, we've gotten rid of the king's defender, the bishop. Now the king is not feeling so well at all. While the, the roof is almost completely gone, there are now more weak squares for us to use. And it's just a matter of getting our pieces close to the king and to those good squares. So now white played h3 with the point of playing knight g4. We made a plan all the way back somewhere around here. And we followed that plan all the way up to move 22 where finally, after knight h4, first we trade off all the defenders of the e5 square because we don't want them uh, to take the knight when they come there. And after we trade all the rooks of the board, we can come to either f5 or f6, and now these knights are really becoming monsters. Black is trying to keep them at bay and is trying to take away the f6 square from us because otherwise that fork would uh, be very ugly for black uh, but white starts thinking of new squares that he can use so f6 is covered g7 is covered and the question is what else can we get g6 is always covered by this pawn f8 is really hard to get to so then we ask what about f7 which is another important square one of our knights can get there and the way we'll do so is by transferring it to e5 and then one of the knights will come to e5 with queen f7 to follow. Now you guys will say, first of all, the king is defending f7, then the queen is defending. Well, the king is not a good defender at all and the queen will be kicked away later with g4. So we just follow that same plan. So first queen f4 to bring in our pieces and to maybe get h6. Black said, no h6 for you, no problem. We just go for e5 and f7, right? We're trying to find new squares to attack from. Knight to e5, preparing uh, g4, and now we don't even need this pawn. 
we don't care about it because we're after the king which is much more important so we can trade off one player of knights no problem which is what happened in the game now the black bishop is under attack and after bishop f, uh, went to c6 and g4 the black queen has to run away and finally we get control over f7 which gives us a completely winning position so guys always ask yourself these two questions first of all what's my worst piece and how can i make it better and when you're making that piece better ask yourself and the second question which is which squares can i use and exploit for my attack and for my pieces